Okay. So, so uh, this is a ruling. Tell us basically what the ruling says before we go on to it. Okay, so basically the court was called to question whether or not uh, Mr. Quayson, who was the person elected to occupy the seats in Parliament for Asin North, was indeed valid, validly elected. Mm -hmm. And the grounds of it are the, um, is that the petitioner or the person who is suing alleges that at the time of filing the application, filing the forms, Mr. Quayson held um, another citizenship to its Canadian citizenship okay. and therefore breached Article 94, which says that any individual who owes allegiance to another country other than Ghana cannot run for a parliamentary seat. So that's what basically the court was called. And we had, there was precedent for this, isn't it? Yes. yes. Okay, yes. Well, I'll come to the precedent. So let's go to the details and see. Okay, so uh, we'll just keep the facts. That's what Kweku has told us. Uh, so this is the case of the petitioner. The petitioner, yes. the petitioner argues that Mr. Kwesin should not have been elected, uh, basically based on Article 94, which says, a person shall not be qualified to be a member of parliament if he owes allegiance to a country other than Ghana. Okay. Now, this issue of allegiance is, yes. an, is an interesting matter, isn't it? Yes. What, what, what is the, the, the behavior of the court towards the word allegiance? Well, most often or not, the court has cited or the court has equated allegiance to um, or citizenship or having a passport of another country to allegiance. If mm -hmm. we remember Adamu Sakandi, he had a British passport, a Bokita pa passport, and the court virtually said, well, um, that means you have breached Article 94. But... The court in Bilson versus Rollins, Bilson and Rollins mm -hmm. noted something different. Mm -hmm. um, the court sort of raised the bar when the citizenship of Rollins, flights, the late flight lieutenant Rollins was questioned. The court said that, well, he served in the military. He swore an oath of allegiance to the Republic of Ghana. He swore a military oath, oath of secrecy. And all of that basically evidenced that an individual or allegiance goes beyond citizenship. Yeah, but, but in Bilson, the Bilson case that you said, yes. I, I think the, the, the main, the, the government of the matter was that the court made the decision that every, Rollins is a Gold Coaster. He was born in the Gold, Gold Coast era. Yes, and and every Gold Coaster on attainment of independence became Ghanaian. Ghanaian yes. And so the, the, the point to decide was whether, Rollins, whether or not Rollins was a Gold Coaster. If he yes. was, then mm -hmm. he became Ghani. And then they added the fact of the exactly. matter that he had so that been is, a military man and all that. Yeah, so that is more or less orbiter. Um, that is by the point, yes. a sort of discussion. So, but the courts did not really lay down principally or, 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 or strictly whether or not having allegiance is different from citizenship. Because I can be a citizen of Ghana, but I may not have allegiance to Ghana. I may be but spying that's, on that's Ghana. A, that's a controversial. That's one of yes. the defenses that Mr. Kwesi raised. Yes, yes. So there are two legs of his defense, which we'll, yes. we'll, we'll yes. look at. The first leg of his defense is what you just talked about, yes. that I may have a British, he's Canadian. I may have yeah, a Canadian passport, but I, am, uh, I do not owe allegiance to Canada. Right. He raised that point. Yes. Then he also raised, actually three. Then he also raised the, the, the second point that the Electoral Commission had looked at the process. The Electoral Commission was party to this matter. Yes, they were yes. the second respondent. Respond, yes. So the Electoral Commission had looked at the process and had qualified me. Upon that, I am covered by that. that he raised that one. And the third one was that he had begun the processes of, uh, of discharging himself of the Canadian citizenship. Yes. That it was not his fault that the process had not completed yes. before. That because of the, the COVID. Is that not a good point for him that the, his, he has evinced intention to to discharge himself of Canadian citizenship. Yes, but the court was also very careful because if you say that a lot of people can claim intention, intention, mm -hmm. I, can, I can do whatever I want and when I am caught, say that, well, I intended to denounce my citizenship. No, he had, he had showed the intention by writing a letter, but the problem with that is he could have withdrawn because you yes. start a process, you can withdraw it before the end. And so yes. you could have withdrawn. Let's see, let's see what tells. Uh, so this is, this is the petitioner's this case. case um, and they argue that the wording of Article 94.2 employs the word allegiance. Allegiance is not the same as citizenship. That's what Quaysen said. That's yes, what he's, 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 allegiance is not the same as citizenship. He, consequently, Quaysen argues that someone may be a citizen of another country without owing allegiance to that country. This one I disagree. Because if you want to be a citizen of Britain, you take an exam, uh, you read the pledge, they have all of these things, you learn how to sing God Save the Queen, mm -hmm. and expressing yourself in those processes makes you owe allegiance to that country. Fundamentally, you do. I mean, I don't know how th this argument was going to be sustained. Anyway, let's see what, what the rest are. He also argues that at the time of the filing of the nomination forms, he had already renounced his Canadian citizenship. Yes, this is an important one. And he claims here, this is also very important, that he did not have control over the renunciation process and therefore could not be faulted for the process of the Canadian authorities so long as he had commenced his process of renunciation that it wasn't his fault that once yes. he had commenced 
Yes. It should be attributed to him that he intended True. to uh, leave that citizenship. Yes, the delay was as a result of the COVID um, pandemic. And so certain institutions in Canada, you know, the lockdowns mm. and things of the sort. So he contends that on that ground, on that basis, it wasn't his fault that um, the COVID-19 came in and he could not, as a matter of fact, obtain the certificates that signed by the minister that says that he are no longer a Canadian citizen. But the court was very careful, erred on the side of caution, because if that is the case, then we can open the floodgates to people to say, I had the intention, I had the intention, I had the intention. Well, I had intention means I had applied, but, but there's another small matter. So um, if he applied, yes. the form that he filled to become a member of parliament, it would say that do you owe allegiance to any other country? He would have written no. He should have written maybe no with explanation that I used to be Canadian. I, we don't know whether he did that. Okay. That's something we have to check. And we have a statement as well. Uh, the, uh, uh, Mr. Quaison is, is his name. Yes, Mr. Quaison. Honorable Quaison has issued a statement um, uh, that, that we, should, we should get. Yes, we'll get the statement uh, shortly. Oh. Not, not yet. Let's go back to the, uh, the court case. We'll come back to the statement that he has issued, just to be fair to him. And I'm guessing that we also have a video of Haruna Idrisu, uh, our favorite minority leader in parliament, uh, saying something about saying something about it, and we'll show it to you as well. So let's get back here. Okay. Uh, okay, we talked about this already. The court had to determine whether or not it had jurisdiction. So this this is the matter that was before the court. Walk us through that. Yes. So the court basically had to determine whether it had jurisdiction, mm -hmm. whether the cancellation of the results violated the independence of the electoral commission, because the respondents were claiming that the electoral commission had, had his, his own processes, person to law, mm -hmm. had followed its own processes, and consequently he had been elected. Mm -hmm. And if the court was called upon to do that, it was tantamount to being subject to another party's, you know, call to okay, so that the, the independence process. So that the, the independence electoral. of the electoral commission, guaranteed yes. by the constitution, exactly. would be challenged yes. or would be violated. That's okay. what Quisin was alleging. Yes. That the if the electoral commission has made the conclusion that I have won the election, they are an independent body. Yes. They are not subject to another body of the, of, of the realm, yes. the judiciary. Therefore, if they had made a declaration that I had won the election, the judiciary should not be able to should be overturn that. Yes. And if they did, they were violating the independence of yes. the... And it stems so, out of the fact that elections are, or persons are elected by the will of the people. It's mm -hmm. the people that vote someone into office. Mm -hmm. And so there's this philosophical debate that courts should not really be the ones to determine who goes into office or not, because we do not vote for judges. We do not... Um, elect judges to fill the offices. Therefore, they should not have the right to overturn our democratic mandate. But the courts had an interesting answer to that mm -hmm. in their response. Let, let, let's go yeah, through and see. So we've gone through uh, the matters before yeah, the court to settle. Okay. So this is the ruling of the court. Okay. Yes. The court noted that the independence of the electoral commission is only maintained when they do not act contrary to the constitution. Okay. So here, the court is coming back to Article One, that yes. the constitution shall be the fundamental yes. law of the land. Yes. Also jumping onto Article Eleven that the laws of Ghana puts the constitution as the important thing, so that everyone is subject to the constitution. So yes. that's what the court was saying, yes. that, that the electoral commission is cannot violate the constitution in whatever they do. If they do that, it's the responsibility of the judiciary yes, to exactly. change it. Okay, so, so that, that looks like a very solid legal argument. Okay, once they do, the court may exercise jurisdiction to ensure that the right thing is done, which is what the judge says yes. is done. Okay, then this is a quote. It says, again, the independence of the second respondent being the electoral commission yes. that is protected relates to the electoral matters. On those matters, it is unconstitutional for any direction or control to be exerted over it unless it is acting illegally. So he's saying that the electoral commission's independence is about elections, yes. not about citizenship. Yes, okay. exactly. Uh, indeed, the first respondent, which is Mr. Quaison, Quaison's argument here is that the second respondent, the electoral commission, mm -hmm. decided to grant him the clearance to participate in the 7 December 2020 parliamentary elections. And that amounts to an administrative act and an exercise of discretion in the performance of the second respondent's functions. Okay. Uh, it continues to say that the court had to answer the question of yes, allegiance. allegiance yes. And on page 38, that's what you found. On page 38 yeah. of the judgment, the court noted that Mr. Quaison had worked for the Canadian government as an administrator in social studies. Uh, further on page 58 of the judgment, the court cited... Uh, with approval, the judgment of the case of the Republic versus High Court, ex parte, Zanato Rollins, that con consequent, co consequently. consequently, it is our view that the eligibility criteria set out in Article 94 1A comes into force only when a public election of a member of parliament has been declared 
by the Electoral Commission, and it has set the time to file the nominations. Okay, so I, I think I get this one. So the Zanetta Rollins issue was about the fact that she wasn't a registered voter, voter yes. at the time she won the NDC primaries. And the Ni Ama, uh, Ni, Ni Okai, or Ni Ama, I guess his name, he was an incumbent member of parliament that Zanetta was challenging for the uh, Clotty Corley constituency. Yes. And he had gone to court to cite Zanetta Rollins' illegibility. Exactly. And the court, the Supreme Court, with a Ni Eboa dissenting, incidentally, the Supreme Court held that. Um, it is only when the Electoral Commission says come and file, it's only then that the question of eligibility arises. Right. Exactly. At the party level, it hasn't arisen yet. Yes. And so Dr. Rollins was cleared to go through because the timetable allowed her to become a registered voter exactly. before the main election. So yes. th that's what the court is saying. So in this instance, the question then came to when they were filing at the Electoral Commission office. So at, that, at that time, was he eligible? He was not. According uh, to the court, at the okay. time, he was filing at the Electoral Office. Uh, but he is Commission. eligible now? Do we know? Yes, because the certificate has actually been issued. So the, it, I don't know if you saw it on social media. Okay, so he's quali So if the, there's a by-election, if he doesn't file an appeal and there's a by-election, he's qualified to run. Well, that's what's up for the court to decide. But the, the case, the guy was the guy was prosecuted. Yes, that's Adam Adamu Sakanda. Adamu Sakanda was yes. prosecuted. But you see, in this instance, there's no criminal of there's no criminal process initiated against him. In but it, but it can, that can come soon. I mean, that the ruling is only yesterday, so yes. that can so come. Yes. It, it, so as of now, we are we are just waiting for the attorney general because in that instance, it was the state attorney or that the attorney prosecuted general him. that prosecuted exactly. So and if he's prosecuted, he will then not be qualified to contest the uh, election yes. if there's a by election. Yes, that is okay. if he's prosecuted and successfully. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. That's important. Uh, thus, a person who qualifies to enter parliament must be a Ghanaian citizen of 21 years old or beyond and a registered voter. That's about the Zanetta one. Yes. So uh, this, this is the point you were just making. Yes. That as at the date of filing his nomination papers, within the time stipulated by the Electoral Commission for that, that particular election. election. Okay. So the that, date of the filing of the nomination papers is filing at the Electoral, filing with the Electoral Commission, not party. the primaries. Yeah, exactly. Not the primaries. Okay, yeah, that's what the Zanetta case established. Okay, let's move on and see. Uh, so what next? You, you, you put this together. So, Tell us. So once the election has been nullified, there has to be a by-election organized for the people of Asin North. The mm -hmm. reason is that the seat is going to be vacant. Mm -hmm. And as we all know, uh, we can't have um, that instance. So there will be a by-election organized. As you said, we, will, we are not very sure if the state will decide to take criminal actions against him, whether maybe he can be charged for fraud or things of the sort. If indeed he is, then he would be barred from running for the seat. However, there is also the option of an appeal to the Court of Appeal. And this way, it, it gets quite interesting because the Court of Appeal in parliamentary election matters is the final Court of Appeal in, in Oh, that's matters. interesting. Exactly. That's very, that's very on, on strange. On a, a petition for a parliamentary election, parliamentary, yes. the Court of Appeal is the final stage. Exactly. High Court, if, Court of Appeal. Yes. If An appeal from there does not lie with the Supreme so, Court. Yes. Oh, if see. no issue of interpretation mm -hmm, comes up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As for interpretation is reserved by virtue of Article 2, Clause 1, it's reserved to the for the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. And the reason is that Article 99 was interpreted strictly by the Supreme Court in um, Bill Bill versus um, Adam Musa Kandi mm -hmm. or Dramani. Dramani, yes. yes. So and they, what did they say? So they inter strictly, they interpreted based on Article 19 of the Constitution, which provides that the High Court shall have jurisdiction to hear and determine any question whether a person has been validly elected as a member of parliament or the seat of that member has become vacant. A person aggrieved by the determination of the High Court under this article may appeal to the Court of Appeal. I see. So the Court of Appeal is the Court of Final Instance exactly. in this matter. So the okay. Court interpreted Article 99 strictly. They do not infer that or maybe for so, Court so of Appeal. So the appeal open to Honorable Quisin. Yes. It's just one step to the Court, the Court of, of Appeal, appeal. Yes. for three judges to hear it. Yes. If they hear it and they agree with the High Court, it's end of story. Yes. Interesting. And then prosecution may lie. Possibly, it depends on the states, mm, because mm. the Attorney General has prosecutorial discretion in line with Article 88 of the Constitution. He or she, he in this instance, but uh, can be mm. a she, can decide whether or not to prosecute. And we have to inform our viewers that the case of Adamu Sakande, if you're just joining, as a member of parliament who was elected uh, by the people of Boko in 2008's election, sometime in 2009, it was observed by his opponent that he had owed allegiance, as, as is an important word tonight, his owed allegiance to Britain and also to Burkina Faso by reason of uh, having British and Burkina Bay passports. The matter went to court, and the court had held against Adamu Sakande that he was ineligible to contest the Boku seat elections. His opponent um, in, the, in the main election, Mahama Yariga, uh, then 
went in for the uh, by-election and was elected. Adamu Sakande was prevented from running for the by-election because prosecution occurred soon after that on the base of the deceit of public officer and all of those crimes in the Criminal Offences Act. Uh, Adamu Sakande was disqualified from participating in the in the event. I think he went to jail a little yes, bit. And later on, he was... How many years was he jailed for? I don't quite remember, but he had to be released on health grounds. Yes, he was released His on health grounds. His heart was failing. So yeah. he was flown abroad at some point for treatment. Mm -hmm. and, and then sometime last year, uh, unfortunately, Adamu Sakande passed uh, to, to eternity. And, and so that's the story that we are relating to this one. Uh, let's move on and yes, see what so else we got. So that's, that's all we have. So, okay. So what's going to happen now is that uh, he has a right to appeal, uh, but the states may also prosecute. He has also issued a statement. Now, let's see his statement. Let's run through very quickly uh, to be fair to him. Let's look at the statement. He says, I wish to use this medium to express my deep and profound appreciation for the outpouring of support and solidarity since the judicial events of yesterday. He continues and says, I am absolutely grateful to the chiefs and people of Asin North for the remarkable show of love and unparalleled resilience. He goes on to say that the solidarity from the rank and file of the NDC and the general public as a whole has renewed my confidence in a brighter future for this country, regardless of the treacherous momentarily setbacks. Wow. As the unimpeachable facts show, I have always been a sincere, loyal, law-abiding and patriotic citizen who only set out in good conscience to come serve the great people of Asin North with all my heart and with all my capacity. Our massive victory in Asin North on December 2nd, 2020 was a pure and legitimate one handed over to us by the discerning people of Asin North and we shall resist every attempt to subvert the true will of the people. Okay, victory from the masses is far superior to the dark machinations of an elite few. That's very strong. Yeah. All my beloved constituents should be assured that I am in high spirit and confident that this momentary travesty shall rather make us emerge stronger. Uh, so I urge you all not to be worried, neither should you be discouraged. The confirmation of our historic victory beckons. Wow, I like that. Take heart and be of good cheer. The victory of the NDC and all true Democrats shall not be stolen. The Almighty God is on our side. We fear no foe. Honorable James Jache Quason, MP Asin North, date signed 29 July. So that is the message from the Asin North MP. Uh, I don't know whether we have the record. Um, do we have the record of the voting pattern in Asin North? Uh, is that it? Sure. Great. Thank you very much. So, uh, viewers, just for your information, you know we like to give you all the information. So, just for your information, here is the voting pattern of the constituency since 1996. And uh, it was a constituency that was uh, part of Canada Japan's constituency. So, in 2000, 2004, 2008, Canada Japan won it all. And then in 2012, it got divided when they were adding new constituencies. So, in 2012, the constituency was split, and the Kennedy Japan then decided to go for Asin Central. My guess is that he knew that Asin North uh, was a bit problematic for him, and so he had to win. To win Asin North might be more difficult. He chose Asin Central. I'm guessing that was the easier one, as far as the party politics concerned. So, here are the results of that constituency since the beginning uh, of the split. In 2012, it was won by the NDC. In 2016, it was won by the MPP. 2020, it had been won by the NDC uh, until we don't know whether there will be a by-election uh, pending an appeal uh, to the Court of Appeal. So that's our story uh, for uh, this part of the show.